Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. All right, folks, our top story, the arrest of Jesse Smollett, the actress who stars on the Fox show Empire. This is not the photo he wanted the world to see. It is the mugshot of Jesse Smollett, who this morning turned himself into Chicago police. It took place at 5 a.m. Chicago time. He was arrested on a felony charge of disorderly conduct, alleging he made a false police report as a result of him saying that he was attacked by two men yelling racist and homophobic slurs and shouting MAGA. The police say they have all the receipts in the form of a $3,500 check. They say Smollett wrote to the two Nigerian men who staged the attack on him. You remember, it was take, it took place on January 29th. Around 2 a.m., when Smollett said, he was attacked by two men wearing masks who yelled racial and homophobic slurs and said he was in MAGA country. Chicago police began to investigate, looking at videos uh, and a variety of things. And as the days progressed, his story began to unravel. Chicago police say the whole thing was made up, a made up publicity stunt in order to garner him attention and a raise on the show. Chicago Police Superintendent Eddie Johnson was clearly angry at a news conference this morning in the Windy City. Good morning, everyone. Before I get started on why we're here, you know, as I look out into the crowd, I just wish that the families of gun violence in this city got this much attention because that's who really deserves the amount of attention that we're giving to this particular incident. So this morning, I come to you not only as the superintendent of the Chicago Police Department, but also as a black man who spent his entire life living in the city of Chicago. I know the racial divide that exists here. I know how hard it's been for our city and our nation to come together. And I also know the disparities and I know the history. This announcement today recognizes that Empire actor Jesse Smollett took advantage of the pain and anger of racism to promote his career. I'm left hanging my head and asking why. Why would anyone, especially an African-American man, use the symbolism of a noose to make false accusations? How could someone look at the hatred and suffering associated with that symbol and see an opportunity to manipulate that symbol to further his own public profile? How can an individual who's been embraced by the city of Chicago turn around and slap everyone in this city in the face by making these false claims? Bogus police reports cause real harm. They do harm to every legitimate victim who's in need of support by police and, and investigators as well as the citizens of this city. Chicago hosts one of the largest pride parades in the world, and we're proud of that as a police department and also as a city. We do not, nor will we ever tolerate hate in our city whether that hate is based on an individual's sexual orientation, race, or anything else. So I'm offended by what's happened, and I'm also angry. I love the city of Chicago and the Chicago Police Department, warts and all. But this publicity stunt was a scar that Chicago didn't earn and certainly didn't deserve. Now, folks, Justice Smollett had his bail hearing this afternoon, his bail was set at $100,000. The judge in this case, Judge John Fitzgerald Liked Jr., who is African-American, scolded Smollett. This is what he said, quote, the most vile and despicable part of it, if it's true, is the noose. That symbol conjures up such evil in this country's history. Fox, which carries empire, says they are monitoring the situation. Smollett's attorney, Put out this file, this statement, quote, like any other citizen, Mr. Smollett enjoys the presumption of innocence, particularly when there has been an investigation 
like this one where information, both true and false, has been repeatedly leaked. Given these circumstances, we intend to conduct a thorough investigation and to mount an aggressive defense. If convicted, Smollett faces up to three years in prison, in state prison, and could be ordered to pay the cost of the investigation, which involved more than 20 Chicago police detectives over the past three weeks. Uh, joining me right now uh, is uh, Cleo Monago, of course. Uh, Cleo uh, is a behavioral uh, specialist, uh, and we have several others who uh, will be here, but let me first go to Cleo. Uh, Cleo, lots of conversation here because Jesse Smollett, African-American, who was also same gender loving. He said this was a racist and homophobic attack. You have folks on the right who are Trump supporters. Uh, in fact, I'm going to read a, a, a tweet from Trump, but folks on the right uh, who, was, who said this was a hoax from the beginning. There are folks who are supporters of Smollett who are angry that he um, uh, did this. Again, he has not been convicted, but you look at what has been presented, they say he was the mastermind behind this. Just your initial thoughts on this strange story. Well, first of all, it's stunning. And um, Eddie Johnson, the superintendent's narrative was powerful. I've rarely seen a black superintendent of police speak like that, identify as a black man before indicting another black man for such a heinous accusation. And this is dangerous. Um, if indeed it's true. The reason I say if indeed it's true because I haven't heard from Smollett yet and I don't particularly tr fully trust the Chicago Police Department and I think we all know why. Laquan McDonald hiding cam recorders, I mean the whole, the whole thing. But one thing I want to make, want to give us something to consider is that this is a high profile anomaly. If indeed it's true, it's not the black community. It's a high profile anomaly you, it's very rare, if ever, that a black person creates something like this. And because it's so high profile, there's a lot of people are demoralized. There's people like Ann Coulter saying stuff like, well, the reason he tried to do a hoax is because racism is a hoax in America. And that was the, that's, a predict, that's a very predictable impulse for, among those people who are opportunizing off of this whole alleged hoax. But this, it's caused a lot of conflict. For example, there were people saying that heterosexual men were being homophobic if they didn't support Smollett's perspective. But what never came out with yep. that narrative was that a lot of same gender loving people didn't, didn't believe and don't believe Smollett as well. So it's been a very conflicting, a very dangerous situation in terms of what it could, what the outcome could be. For example, now that black, like, like Mr. Johnson said, when somebody black reports say hate crime, people might second guess it now and, and treat them like chicken little. You know, but like here's- The sky is falling. I want to bring in Dr. Greg Carr, Chair of Afro-American Studies at Howard University. But Greg, here's what's interesting about that. Charles Stewart, 1989, Boston, uh, says black man killed his wife. We now know Charles Stewart was behind it. South Carolina, Susan Smith, somebody black killed her children. We now know that she drowned her kids in her car. Um, that was a story that we covered on this show. It was either in, I can't remember, was it was South Carolina or Georgia, where a white woman, police officer, said that a black man shot her in her home. Well, in fact, the investigation was that she actually shot herself. Now, when those things happened, I don't recall anybody saying, ooh, the next time somebody white says something, we're not gonna be able to trust this story. I believe, Greg, this goes all this goes back to in America where who are your credit to your race, that when something happens to one black person, something happens to one gay person or something happens to one Muslim or everybody black and everybody who's gay and everybody who's Muslim have to apologize and not be afraid. That's what I'm hearing. Absolutely. I mean, you know, this is the spectacle culture we live in. Ann Coulter and Jesse Smollett live in a spectacle culture. How do you pierce through the noise to get your message across? And at the end of the day, whiteness is invulnerable. 
it will always be viewed because of its invulnerability as the behavior of human beings, individual human beings. And as you said, when you start talking about non-whiteness, and at the end of that spectrum, of course, is blackness, each one of us represents the entire group. And when you then complicate it further with issues of gender or class, you're talking about another platform where all of that is amplified and one person represents the group. I agree with Dr. Minago, I agree with Cleo. When we heard the superintendent say that, he wished that people would come for uh, homicide or, hurt or gun violence the way they're showing up for this. They're showing up for this because it is a spectacle culture. And whether or not uh, Brother Smollett did it or not, made this false accusation or not, is almost secondary. Because what we really are seeing is it's another test of the general population. And once again, we have failed because everybody out there had an opinion that they were spewing through a microphone without knowing anything about the facts. So it really is just another test of whether or not we can do anything other than do what we've done. So seven hours ago, Donald Trump sent out a tweet. But what's it, now first of all, Donald Trump tweets all the time. <laughs> but here's what's different, different here, Cleo. I can't remember the last time where Donald Trump tagged the very person he was talking about. In this tweet, it's period at Jesse Smollett. What about MAGA and the tens of millions of people you insulted with your racist and dangerous comments, hashtag MAGA? Well, we all know that uh, the, the president has an adolescent mind and plays tit for tat at every opportunity. And you may have seen that uh, he was pre pretty severely attacked by Smollett who called him an N-word, a punk, and all kinds of things that he tweeted. And I imagine that Trump, who's a tweetologist, saw that. So he had to get his revenge. And of course, as I said on an earlier show, white supremacists and people like Trump, this was an early Christmas gift for them. This makes them feel like, okay, see, MAGA is not bad and it's not really anything wrong. Again, Ann Coulter said that, that, that Smullett committed a hoax because racism is a hoax. So they can't wait to find new veils in which to hide their white supremacy and their evil under. And unfortunately, based on the reports, Jesse Smollett delivered to them an angle in which to continue what they do in a veiled way and why they claim it doesn't exist. Greg, again, what, what, what is interesting here is when people begin uh, to extrapolate one incident somehow changing the dynamic of if somebody comes forward. The reality is this, if there is a future incident that is racial or homophobic, you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna investigate. And then when they investigate and they verify the claims, then they move forward. What you have here is Justice Smollett, and again, he's innocent until proven guilty, uh, but based upon the evidence thus far, he created this elaborate hoax. This to me, I, for me, is not this, this, this is just gonna just change everything in the future because we have numerous stories where individuals made things up that did not turn out to be true and it's not like we didn't believe the next person where it happened. Absolutely, I mean, Donald Trump obviously has no credibility as a racist and as a man who's clearly unhinged. We can set him aside for the moment. But the approach that you've taken since this story broke is the approach that all journalists should take. Uh, those of you out there who are practicing journalists like Roland Martin, pay attention. What happened? You said, I can wait. I'm patient. The story has to come out. This is the line we have to draw between journalists and those who are engaging in this spectacle culture, platform-based, trying to get visibility, social media culture. And that's the bottom line. Now, as it relates to the police, I agree again with Dr. Minago. Shout out to the uh, Chicago police for having a standard that they're trying to uphold and to the commissioner. Now, let's see that same standard applied when we start talking about the death of black and brown people at the hands of law enforcement. And we'll see if they can maintain that kind of momentum. But at the end of the day, you got to wait. You got to be patient. Everybody's just jumping out there because they're trying, again, to be seen and heard in this spectacle culture. But we also Eugene have Craig, to Eugene Craig organization. Let's let one second. One second. I'm bringing Eugene here. Uh, Eugene, let's also just be clear. Okay, the reality is, there were can't the number of cameras were there. It's because we live in a celebrity-driven culture. Yeah. So let's just. I mean, 
I, I understand the superintendent. I had people who were going, I've never seen this happen where the prosecutors come out and read the statement. We live in a celebrity driven culture. When you go through how many followers Rihanna, Kim Kardashian, Beyonce, Jay-Z and others have uh, versus individuals who are professors or people who are authors, that's what we have here. And so, yes, you're going to see far more coverage of this because we live in a celebrity driven culture. But the bottom line is simple. This is one dude who has been charged. And at the end of the day, if he chooses to fight it, it's going to play out in court or which I think is going to happen, Eugene. I think his folks are going to plea yep. because at some point, do you want to continue with the hoax as opposed to continue to be to be embarrassed? I, I agree with you. I think he's probably going to end up, you know, his team's going to find some misdemeanor they can plead down to. Um, I mean, you know, the guy's a bad liar. <laughs> um, I mean, I think there are a, a good card of folk that were skeptical of the story uh, from the beginning. Um, I mean, you know, who's out at 15 degree weather, you know, uh, running around with bleach in a noose. Um, I mean, it's a, it's, it was a horribly put together hoax. Um, I mean, if you're going to make the whole, uh, you know, this is a racist white guys that did this, I'm pretty sure there are enough racist white guy in the Chicago Metro that you could have paid double blind to make this thing happen. Um, but that's neither here or there. But I agree 100% with you. Um, we are in a social media age. We are in an age of influence. We are in the age of celebrity. And, um, you know, I saw the frustration in the police superintendent's uh, uh, press conference of the media that was surrounding this, but it became a story of interest because of the person that was involved. Now, if the police superintendent wants to welcome that same media scrutiny when we have another Laquan McDonald or another Mike Brown or another Trayvon Martin or Freddie Gray, then all by all means. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I, by all means. But furthermore, um, I do like the standard that's being set here when it comes to false police uh, uh, statements. Um, I just hope that same energy is kept across the board going forward. But it's not. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Calling all HBC alumni, students, as well as uh, leaders. Uh, Ford is looking to improve mobility in HBCU communities, uh, and they are offering up a $25,000 mobility challenge grant. Now, here's a, the winning program will receive a grant of up to $25,000 to implement their proposal. The deadline to apply, folks, is March 31st, 2019. Uh, we want you to go to fgb.life, fgb.life, for more information and to apply. Don't forget, the deadline is March 31st, 2019, and Ford goes further in our community, and we certainly thank uh, Ford Cares for being a partner here at Roller Martin Unfiltered and for them supporting uh, HBCUs. Now back to your Roller Martin Unfiltered video.